Hey, what's up? This is DJ Thunderous. I'm happy to be here with Trisha and Jason from the band Empyrean Fire. What's up, guys? Can you tell us how the band began, please? Uh, it's been about uh, two years ago since we started. Yeah, and um, I mean, the, the idea of the, the album uh, Deliverance has been in the works for about 10 years. So, um, you know, but the band, we got together about two years ago, and we've been working hard ever since. Man, Trisha, I wish I knew you could sing like this. You really, oh. you really shocked us. I have to say that. Oh, well, that's good. We like to hear that. <laughs> I, sh I think I shock myself sometimes. <laughs> so what, did you just come out with it one day, or what's going on with that? Um, like I said, you know, for many years, my mom was a country singer, so music was always in the household, and... Um, you know, that's where my love, you know, came from, is listening to her, and, um, you know, we just, I've been singing my whole life. I remember sitting at my grandparents' table eating dinner, and they were like, can you please stop singing and start eating? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Now, how did yeah, you, for Jake? how did oh, you guys, yeah, no, sorry, how did you guys, you know, become a band, and how did this come about and did you have any struggles becoming a band uh well it just started off with uh, me and trisha at first and uh there was a little bit of a struggle finding members at first especially you know trying to find a drummer because we play pretty fast and uh also trying to find you know like-minded people for the project it did take some time in that aspect um but yeah you know overall uh, it came together pretty pretty smoothly. I mean, me and Trisha uh, kind of just got together, and she basically gave me a few core notes to work with in a sequence that she, you know, would really like, and I would basically take those notes and, uh, you know, build the guitar riffs and build the songs out of them. And uh, I laid in the drum programming, laid in some bass tracks, and then our, uh, our synth player, Brian, we sent the tracks over to him, and he put his keyboard over him and uh yeah they it all came together really great that's cool and how long did it take you guys to work on all of this uh it took us about two years and like i said the the idea the concept of the album has been in the works for actually 12 years because 10 years before you and i met and then the past two years actively working on it so um yeah two years Wow, I guess good things come to those who wait, because you guys are excellent together, I have to say that. First time we ever heard it, we were like, wow, that's amazing. They're so perfect together. Thank you so much. If you've seen us behind closed doors, you might say different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can just imagine, but you know what? You guys are excellent, and that's great. Now, have you guys had any struggles along the way? Have you like changed, had to have you know change members, and who are the current members? Uh, yeah, no, no lineup changes so far. We've added, uh, besides me and Trisha, we have our keyboard player, Brian. And then we have recently added Michael Thompson, our, who is our new drummer, who used to be the drummer for one of our favorite symphonic black metal bands, Ceremonial Casting. So we're really oh, yeah. excited to have him on board. That's awesome. Really excited to, yeah, once we're able to play shows again. <laughs> That's awesome. I know it kind of sucks. How have you guys been doing with this, you know, whole COVID thing going on? How have you guys been getting together? Uh, honestly, we have been just doing everything from our own separate houses. Um, I, I think that we miss, you know, getting together, but it, it just, for us, it seems to work well. I mean, technology, there's parts of technology that I really appreciate, and then there's parts of it that I don't. And the part that I do is that it is allowing, um, you know, people to write music, be creative, be in even, you know, different cities and towns, even different countries, and still be able to create together. You know, you send mm -hmm. a piece over here, and they add their piece, and they send it back to you. And, um, it's, I mean, it's a it is fun doing it that way but we i think we would more prefer getting together i think that energy is different when you're all sitting in the same room together now are you guys able to do that a little bit right now or not yet no we the our album deliverance is pretty much 
done. We're still m- mastering a few tracks, but mm-hmm. um, as far as writing new music is concerned, we are we do have a few things written, but we're really primarily focusing on trying to get this album out and uh, you know into the ears of many. Um, and at the time, uh, since we couldn't find a drummer quick enough for us, we decided to just go with. Uh, program drums for this album so that's why like we actually haven't even played live with i mean we haven't played together with all of our members yet so that's something that's going to be really fun to look forward to as well that's cool and what do you guys hope to look like when you're live out on stage you know what would it be like to be empyrean fire dark and dirty all right we like it like that (laughs) and fiery hot sweaty fiery filthy (laughs) but fun too i can't forget that part (laughs) yeah you always want to have the fun and you want to have the crowd you know enthused with you guys and you know it's kind of hard with this kind of metal obviously in some places and what's the metal scene like where you guys are when it's normal um i think Portland, Oregon is pretty good when it comes to music in all genres and including metal because we have so many talented bands from this area. We've got Uwada, we've got, you know, Petrification, we've got a new band, Svavabat. Um, I mean, we just, this area is full of really talented musicians and so there's a lot of support here. Um, it's a very good place for, you know, creative freedom and um, just a lot of support. It's it's really nice. Uh, when, you know, prior COVID, um, you know, there were a lot of people always coming out to see the shows and, you know, supporting your, you know, if you're doing a book signing or if you're in the middle of a magazine or, you know, whatever you've got going on, um, there was a lot of support out here for it, for sure. I love this area. So what got you both into music and metal and into this genre that you're into now? Uh, For me, I got in uh, pretty young. Uh, I had first heard, I think, I want to say Metallica was probably like the first metal band I heard when I was maybe seven or eight years old. And uh, that really made me want to start playing guitar. And after playing guitar, I just, you know, I fell in love with so many different genres from black metal to death metal and doom and you know uh gore grind and all sorts of you know all the underground stuff i just went through everything and so ever since you know maybe age 12 i've just been trying to find as much new music as i can all within the you know within the metal and extreme music realm for me uh i think i was born singing i mean literally <laughs> out of the womb like you mentioned before <laughs> Um, So, you know, like my mom was a musician, her partner, uh, she played guitar. So uh, growing up in our household, both of them, you know, my mom singing, Linda playing guitar and me, you know, and my sister and cousin just kind of sitting around um, listening. But as I grew older, you know, I had two older, I have a, a sister and my cousin that I lived with and they were into harder stuff and more aggressive stuff like King Diamond and Merciful Fate and my sister really liked you know Dio and Ronnie you know um, Judas Priest and so I was really lucky because we had gospel in our household we had country we had butt rock or hair metal whatever you want to call <laughs> butt it butt rock <laughs> you know uh the the darker stuff too so i had it i had it coming from every direction and a lot like jason you know i i love music and if you look in my record player or my record collection rather you'll see anything from classical music to black metal to hip-hop i have some nwa in there i've got you know abba and so you know I just, I love really good music. And as far as symphonic black metal goes, I've always been a huge, I I love black metal. I love extreme music. And so, um, you know, with like, you know, Jason had mentioned, we got together and I just gave him some examples and, you know, we just sat down and we love keys, you know, Brian, our keyboard player, he's freaking 
fantastic. Yeah, he's super talented. Yeah. Super talented. Like he just knows how to work keys and he just did a fantastic job um you know he also is another musician that loves all genres of metal i mean he's played in so many bands i i i you know he's just he's so talented as well both you know him and jason can can damn near play almost any instrument that you put in their hands that's cool now can you play an instrument uh me yeah i can play the tambourine <laughs> oh, there you go we'll have to hear that on the next album <laughs> i can sing it i can play a mean ass tambourine <laughs> there you go bang that shit sister <laughs> i will take it up that's cool I'll i do <laughs> you can shake that stuff and sing there you go <laughs> I do have a question from the chat room. Um, Dad Wizard wanted to know if you actually like country music. I love country music. I love my mom. She used to sing like, you know, Conway Twitty, Loretta Lynn, um, Dolly Parton. Um, I do. I absolutely love the older stuff. And I do like a little bit of the newer stuff. I just kind of feel like it's more pop as opposed to like the the classic country which is what i like and jason i think yeah i like the old stuff like hank and Waylon and merle haggard uh i love hank three he's probably my favorite country artist that's cool now have you ever sang red solo cup nope <laughs> <laughs> not yet but nope. after this after this interview we'll get right on it <laughs> all right all right so back to your <laughs> back to your album you, you have coming up what's the name of the album and how many tracks are on it and you know what what else did that entail i know you had jason aaron wood on board and you had other people on board and that's really cool yeah, Jason Aaron Wood helped came to he just was like a guardian angel in a sense because we were trying to make a, a video for our uh, first track that we released Corruption and uh, I thought I was like I can I can do this Adobe stuff and you know with about four years of training I can totally do that you know someone going into that's such a, a, a it's such a unique software and there are so many small details it's it's incredibly amazing and it's also incredibly hard but he kind of he knew and he i reached out for help and he answered and he put it together for us and he did it he was awesome he just helped us out a lot so i want to say kudos to jason for that um Wait, what was it? See, now I started talking so much I forgot the other part of your question. Oh, the name of the album is Deliverance, and we have six tracks on there. Cool, and how did you come up with the name for the album? Well, it is a concept album, uh, and it's based off, loosely based off of a book, um, Milton's Paradise Lost, Paradise Regained, which is a poem that was written in the mid-1600s. And um, I read the book many many years ago and i thought man this is such a great story it would be really cool to write an album based off of this and so that's what we did we wrote you know there are six tracks and each track describes a, a particular plane or a hurdle that um you know at the time they called him lucifer or the red dragon or you know whatever whatever hurdle he was going through uh, to get him cast out of heaven cool so speaking of the album i'm going to go on to some more questions from the chat room actually some Sweet. zach wants to know do you like ba bubble baths or showers better <laughs> i like them both <laughs> i'm gonna take a I'm going to take a bubble bath first, and then I'll shower later. There you go. And do you drink any cocktails when you're in the bubble bath? Uh, you know, I probably drink like a bourbon. I like I like probably bourbon on rocks. Jason, how about you? You like bubble baths? A uh, beer. Got to have a beer. <laughs> oh, that's right. You like beer, shower beer. Shower beer. <laughs> shower beer. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> he also has to have a beer when he poops. <laughs> oh, there you go. I can see him taking his clothes off, drinking a beer, sitting on the chair. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> All right. Another que <laughs> Another question from the chat room. What's the best concert you've ever seen? Jason, you go first. I'm going to have to go with a Hank 3 concert. I saw Hank 3 
that's uh, Hank Williams the third. Uh, I saw him out in uh, it was Eugene, Oregon, uh, and it was just an awesome show because he played two hours. I don't know how he did this tour because every night he played two hours of country and then he switched over and played two hours of metal, and it was just an awesome show. It was four hours long, and uh, I, w- I remember I crowd surfed there and I got lifted up like higher than I had ever been lifted up crowd surfing and. It was just an awesome show. It was awesome to have that different mix of, you know, the country fans and the metal fans there and, you know, a mosh pit going on during country. It was just fucking awesome. That's cool. I think I think for me it's hard. But one of the shows that sticks out to me is was in a tiny little bar here in Portland. Um, I think it was called The Branks. And it was Dead Congregation, Nelt wrote... And I want to say it was either wear a goat, but again, like Jason, you know, it was just, it was packed first and foremost, and it was insane. It was literally, I mean, we were packed like sardines, completely sweaty. And I know it does. For most, it may not sound like a great a great time to be packed in and sweating, but it was so much fun. The musicians were on point. They were solid. Their music was loud, and the sound guy did a great job. It was just, it was a really, really, really good show. That's cool. So I have a question going out to Trisha. What was it like when you met Eric from Watain and when you did that interview? What was it like for you? That's coming from Zach in the chat room. That was, honestly, that just gave me goosebumps because that whole show, it was uh, Watain, Behemoth, and The Devil's Blood. And that probably is another one of the shows that really sticks out to me as far as being amazing for different reasons. Um, To interview Eric Danielson from Watain was, it was an honor. I'm a huge Watain fan, and that show in particular was very important to me. Um, he was very nice. I It could be because I bought him a, a fucking gallon of Jack Daniels. To the <laughs> well, end. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but he was really cool, and he shared stuff in that interview that he's never shared with anyone else. And, you know, when you are able to, you know, someone who is so established and traveled and, you know, has written so much music and and to be able to find a piece of something, you know, that um, he would share with you uh, that hasn't been shared before, it was really, really a very cool experience. We, you know, one of the things that I knew about, um, Eric was that he was good friends with John Nodebeat from Dissection, mm-hmm. you know, and I kind of, I, I did talk, I asked him about it, but I, what I appreciated about his answer is that he reserved that information because him and they were good friends and he didn't, you know, he, he was like, you know, respectfully, I'm just going to, you know, kind of move on from that because, and I respect that. A That's whole, cool. You know, yeah, it was, and I, I, I was just like in awe. It was a really, really cool interview. Yeah, it was awesome. That's great. And he was really nice. Yeah, I can imagine how nice he was. I would have loved to interview him. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, the same day, I mean, that was a big day for interviews because I had, I think I spent like a couple of hours interviewing um, Eric Danielson, and then I spent a couple of hours um, interviewing The Devil's Blood, and it was just... Absolutely, Salim Lamucci. He was another one that was just absolutely fantastic. Both of those interviews that day, I went home and I felt like I needed to smoke a pack of cigarettes at once. <laughs> smoke a pack of cigarettes in a joint, man. You got to cool down yeah. and calm down. Have a bourbon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for sure. It was a really, really great day. It was a great, great, great time. That's awesome. Now, I have another question from the chat room from Titan. Where do you see your direction in the band going after COVID has finally ended? Uh, we definitely love to play some live shows. And, I mean, we'd love to even tour and even, you know, go overseas. Hit, you know, we'd love to play everywhere if possible. Yeah, most definitely. And I think that, you know... <clears throat> It may look different. The landscape for touring may look different after COVID, and that's fine. You know, we just want to, uh, you know, to to play live. I mean, that's there's no other experience that you can explain, like, how 
cool that that feeling of being live and doing a live ritual in front of people and all that energy exchange uh it's just it's it's amazing and hopefully yeah we definitely want to get out and tour and you know to continue writing more amazing black metal symphonic black metal for everybody so if you could play live with anyone out there who would it be with who would be like your dream i already know yours trisha (laughs) that's so hard i mean i would love i think oh man 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 that's a long (laughs) Yes, that's a long list. I think, honestly, like, it would be kind of cool to do a local, like, get some local bands like Imperial Fire and Uwada and Svavabat or, you know, Petrification, like, some uh, do a local tour, you know, with our local bands. Um, and then if we could have, like, any band in the whole wide world, um, I would definitely... I think for me personally, I would love to tour, even though they're not symphonic black metal with mm-hmm. Watain. Unfortunately, you know, we can't tour with the Devil's Blood, but if Salem was still here, I would. those would be my choices. Jason, what about you? Uh, like you said, I'd love to do a tour with, with like Uwada and Panzerfaust. Yeah. Would be sick. And That would uh, be cool. You know, um, I would I'd love to do shows with Watain as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as long as we can tolerate the stench of the dead pigs. <laughs> That's all right. Watain, if you're out there, they're looking and they're booking. So let's get them going. You guys would be perfect. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you. So we're going to go back to your album now. When is it going to be releasing? And, you know, what do we have to look forward to? Do you have any videos coming out for it or... Uh, we are going to be releasing Deliverance uh, in this winter, 2020. Um, we're not signed yet, so we're looking also to get signed. So if anybody's out there listening, please check us out. <laughs> get in contact with us. Um, we will also try to get in contact with you. Um, as far as uh, new music goes, we don't. at this point, we don't have any like video videos. We have what we're calling audio visualizers, mm-hmm. and they're kind of... They're kind of like videos, but it's kind of <clears throat> just some images on the screen that kind of have some movement with information on it, on like you know the new album and. And we we would really like to do uh, like an actual music video if possible. Where that's definitely you know we're not ruling that out. It's definitely in the books for a possibility. And what would you think also- it would be like to have that music video? Where would you like it staged? Probably. I'd probably say somewhere out in a mountain or forest area. Uh, we'd probably have cloaks, lots of fire. I would mean, just just be really epic. It would just have to be a really epic video. Maybe outside of a church or something? Yep. Oh, yeah. That would be a good Speak- idea. You know, speaking of, you must have been reading my mind because I have a fo- we have a photo shoot tomorrow at an old, like an old down, like, abandoned church so oh, that crap. is <laughs> yeah and i wanted to share with you a little see nobody else knows this except you i'm giving you the scoop <laughs> all right we like the scoop <laughs> we have a new track that we're going to be releasing in a couple of weeks called the gathering storm and i think it's fair to say jason uh it's one of our favorite tracks it is literally so epic and so intense and so fucking crazy i think people might shit their pants you're giving me the chills again here trisha (laughs) (laughs) it's It's actually going to be next next friday i believe is when we're planning on releasing that yep september the, that first Friday uh, of September on Bandcamp. So, yeah, it, it's called The Gathering Storm, and um, it's just, it gives me goosebumps still listening to it. After, you know, a couple of years of been, you know, listening to it and singing to it, uh, it's just pretty, pretty intense, and we hope that you guys like, love it. All right. Now, I have one more question, Trisha. How do you get those growls out that you do? You know that for the clean for the dirty singing, mm-hmm. I do, I do cleans and I do some screams. The primary is Jason. Jason does growling. Okay. I was just wondering because I thought the most of it was yours, and 
I was like giving you all the credit for that, so that's good to know. But I'll tell you, you guys are like point on the whole band. You guys are, and that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that so much. It's been a lot of work, and sometimes a lot of gray hairs, and sometimes a lot of anger. But out of those things come really good things sometimes. <laughs> Pappy swabbing the deck in the chat room. He's so excited to hear you guys. It's funny. Oh, thank you. We appreciate it. I know I, I was laughing because somebody in the chat room had said, uh, Pappy with a, what was it? Pappy with a strappy. A strappy? Well, he's doing his <laughs> lappies. He does laps in the tub. <laughs> so we figured that he had his strappy on in the lappy. <laughs> I was dying laughing. <laughs> we have so much fun in the chat room and so much fun here at Metal Devastation Radio. And we just love it when the bands come in and we do interviews with them. And it's very special for us to have you guys on here as well, Trisha, because you're a member of Metal Devastation Radio. I just, you shocked us with all of this. That's all I have to say. Well, thank you. We appreciate that so much. And I just wanted to let everybody know we have a band camp up, Empyrean Fire 666. We also have a Facebook page, Empyrean Fire. We have a YouTube channel, uh, Empyrean Fire. So you can find us there. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, we will answer as quick as we can. And uh, we just appreciate you guys. Thank you for having us on. We appreciate the support from everyone in the chat room. And that's yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Yep. Do you want to do a shout out to anyone out there special? Um, I want to say thank you to Metal Devastation Radio, uh, Zach. I um, want to shout out to you guys for having us on the show. And everybody in the chat room, you guys are fucking awesome. Titan, Vio, DJ Thunderous, of course. Uh, is it Eric? Or is it, how do you say Elric? Er Eric? Elric, with uh, an Elric. Yep, that's Pat. And there's a bald wizard in there and so everybody who's in the chat room thank you guys so much everybody listening online at metal devastation radio.com we appreciate it we thank you for your uh for your questions yes thank you for having us and it's our first interview first fan interview awesome <laughs> i want to thank you guys could you guys possibly do a shout out for the radio station absolutely this is Trisha from Empyrean Fire, and you're listening to The Thunderhead Show on MetalDevastationRadio.com, where metal reigns supreme. All right. Thank you for doing that, guys. We're going to crank up your track here. Here is Empyrean Fire with Corruption. Crank it up. Mm -hmm. 